Today we're going to use this Moschio flail mower to mow down these corn stalks, these weeds here. I'd like to make sure they're mulched up really well so that we'll be able to get through this with a plow or tiller, whatever we decide to use. We're also going to announce the winners of the Lube Shuttle giveaway. Let's get started. <laughs> We had the best sweet corn this year I think we probably ever had. You can tell by these stalks, they're very tall for sweet corn stalks. They look almost like a yellow dent field corn stalks, they're so tall. We use corn with the BT gene, which keeps away the bugs and the worms, and uh, our ear quality was fabulous. We try to plant our sweet corn in multiple plantings so that we have it get ready at different times. We planted two different varieties this year. One was called SV9010SA. The other is called Pursuit. We shared a lot of this corn with our friends, and overall, folks preferred the SV9010SA. Well, I tell you what, the morning glories that are in the corn are gonna, are gonna present a little bit of a hassle. Um, now, it looks like I've kinda knocked the corn over maybe as much as mowed it uh, for a lot of the green stalks. I actually think down on the far end where I was, the stalks were drier, the earlier planting, they'd already dried out more. I think I mowed them and, and crushed them up more. These stalks are still pretty green here. We still have some ears um, that we just didn't use up. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, we tried to give us away as much as we could and we couldn't find a place to give it. So there's still some corn out there. It'll be interesting to see if we can tell how the mower mulches that at all. I do want to show you some hydraulic modifications we made. If you remember the last time I used this uh, flail mower, I talked about how fast it moved in and outward. Uh, so I talked to my friends at discounthydraulichose.com and I got some flow control valves. I want to show you how they work. I think I'll mow across this end to see if uh, hitting the corn straight on per row does any different as far as the mulching versus hitting it sideways per row. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Now I want you to notice how slow this is raising. And contrast that with how fast it goes downward. In fact, that's not even full speed down. But this is full speed up right now, the way I've got it adjusted. You can see that it's moving really slowly upward and really fast downward. Now I've got a flow control valve on here that I can open up and then I can make the upward fast go fast. Okay, here we go, back down. Now watch the upward. I'm gonna start it off, not at all, really. And then I can make it, I can adjust the speed with my right hand here on this flow control. Okay. Now, the purpose of this flow control valve is to let me operate it more smoothly. If it moves slow like this, I can easily move it like this, but if you'll, if you'll see on the downward side, even when I just fudge it a little bit, it, it's jerky. 
it's really hard for me to control. Now, I only got two of these float control valves and I chose to put one of them on each uh, of the controls, the up and down as well as the left and right. The truth is I need four of the valves. I need one for each hose of the in and out. So right now on the it, I've got the flow control on the outbound side, but when I go in it goes faster. So you can see it jerks on the way in, but on the way out it can actually that's a little faster even than what I needed it. I can on the in it's fast. On the out I've got it really slow now. I can make it a little faster. There's yeah. So I hope you can see what I'm saying. Now, these flow control valves give you this variable flow. There's another solution to that, and that is small restrictors. The restrictors are a, a, a permanent speed, so in other words, they always restrict the hydraulic flow to a certain speed. They're less expensive, and if you know exactly how much flow you need, that's probably the way to go. For this scenario, I don't necessarily know what flow I need, so I can adjust it here with this flow control valve. Oops, just the wrong one. I'm going to take just a moment here to show you this ear of sweet corn. Boy, this would have been a good one. We ate as much sweet corn as we could hold. Um, but it's beginning to, uh, well, it's not beginning to, it's, it's denting now and drying. Now, you'll see that where it begins to lose its liquid, those kernels really just shrivel up here. And so you will see for sweet corn, it, they really shrivel a lot because there's so much sweetness and so much sugar and, and all in there that they shrivel so much. Yellow dent corn, which is uh, the name for what we use in the field, uh, the farmers grow, doesn't have near that much sugar in it and therefore the kernels don't shrink as much. They still get a little dent in the end, but they don't, they don't shrivel so much. Um, this looks similar to the yellow dent corn. It just shrivels a lot more. Uh, this particular one's still got a lot of moisture in it. You, I can probably squeeze, yeah, I can squeeze moisture out of it. But it will eventually shrivel up entirely. Here comes Martha. Uh, some of you have been asking about Mary. Uh, I, I told you in one video that we lost Mary. Um, well, he was here about two o'clock one afternoon and at five o'clock we went out looking for him and he was gone. Uh, he has not come back. So we suspect either a hawk or a coyote got him. Um, he wasn't scared of anything, so it's not totally surprising. He didn't, he didn't know any enemies, so, um, well, we miss him, but that's the way it is. We'll try to get another kitten sometime because Martha, our other boy cat, needs a playmate. He's kind of lonely without him. When I first got this mower, I set this roller downward so that it makes it mow at its highest level possible. I was afraid that I'd be hitting rocks or other, you know, obstacles that I didn't want to hit. Um, I've been trying to learn from some other people that use these mowers, and I think I'm going to raise that back up. I think it's uh, intended that these mowers mow really low. If we walk over here to the corn, you can see that I have essentially ridden this corn down more than I've mowed it, right? A lot of it just, it never really got cut off at all. It's still attached, it's just been ridden down. So I think part of that is because I, I, I run over it and I run over it at a high enough level that it, it doesn't really get down, down there and, and, and dig it back up. So I'm gonna raise these two bolts right here, put them from this hole up to this hole, do that on both sides. That's gonna raise that roller upward and effectively allow the mower to cut lower to the ground. And we'll see if we can reach down and pick up some of those corn stalks. It'll be interesting. So in addition to raising that roller, I also raised the skids on each end of the mower. So it should be significantly lower. Uh, the cut should be significantly lower. Let's see if it has any difference in behavior. We'll probably see some dust stirred up because it probably will hit in the dirt a little bit. Some of you might be wondering if we could save this sweet corn for seed for next year. 
Well, that doesn't work for hybrid corn. I'm no expert, and I may have to get some of you agronomists to help me. The seed we plant is a cross-pollination between two different seed varieties called a hybrid. Hybrid corn was first developed in the late 1870s. It began to be widely grown in the 1930s. My grandfather always talked about the transition and just how difficult it was for farmers to accept it. But the yields quickly doubled over the open pollinated corn, and as time has progressed, the hybrids continue to get better and better. Higher yields, better stock strength, better disease resistance, better drought resistance. The average yields have at least doubled since I was a young boy. Looking at the numbers, the corn production in 2020 will be almost four times the amount it was in 1970. And the fascinating or maybe even scary thing is that we're still only producing a few percent more than the world needs. If our production had remained at 1970 levels, I suspect there would be a lot of people hungry today. I'm going slowly here so that Christy can get a good camera shot. I don't have that many more stocks to mow down, so I want to make sure that we get quality shots while we can. Well, this is day and night's difference. You can, you can see this last round just how much more chopping it did. Let me just run my foot across there and see if I... Okay, so there was one spindly little stock there that didn't get picked up. I mean, there's a few here that didn't get mowed and crushed, but this was totally different than the previous round. Look at the previous round. Hardly any of those got chopped up. I think you're going to have to do that again. I am going to have to do it again. The question is, is that going to help? Yeah, because now you're knocking them down. down. Yeah. To the point where maybe if I come the other direction after I get all done. Look, until this summer, I didn't have any experience with a flail mower. So uh, I'm learning uh, just like you guys are by hopefully by watching. And uh, I've learned more today than you can imagine. I mean, this is amazing to me. It's, it's clear to me you got to cut low with a flail mower. That's where the magic is. And I haven't been cutting low enough. I had a, a few people telling me that. You see, I listen. Okay, here are the winners of the lube shuttle giveaway. This means one grease gun, one tube of grease shipped to your door in no particular order here. This is just whatever order they ended up on my paper. Uh, John Simone from Bath, Pennsylvania. Chad Colby, Frankfort, Indiana. Ed Bell. Hagerstown, Indiana, Joseph Nevin, Brookfield, Ohio, Andy Lewis, Vicksburg, Mississippi, Skip Igo, Ellsworth, Ohio, Mark Rathbun, Alvaton, Kentucky, Paul Kwiatowski, Orchard Park or Orchard P, New York, John Krasginski, Portland, Michigan, Highlands Church in Abington, Virginia, David Pakulin, Nishanik, New Jersey, Spencer Turner, Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, John Herzing, Freeburg, Illinois, Eric Hoskins, Jarrettsville, Maryland, Terry Mary, Windsor, South Carolina, Eric Sampson, Westfield, Indiana. Hey, that's right by me. How did he get on here? Yeah. Tim Pickens, Lucerne, Indiana, Mike Francis, Mount Airy, North Carolina, Justin Devine, Newark, Delaware, Joseph Milbrat, Bismarck, North Dakota. Now, we had a really hard time picking these. Uh, we were able to narrow it to probably about 100, and then it got very difficult. Uh, it was not easy at all. Uh, I picked the final 20, so I'm the one to blame. Um, just throw it at me, I guess. Um, it's if you didn't win. A little bit about the criteria. As you know, this was meant to, to be a, a way to kind of share the love, um, to, to just try to make someone's life better for 2020. We discussed at quite some length of what criteria we were going to use. We, we knew we wanted this to be a scenario where uh, we wanted to give it to people where they would be able to be helped. Um, perhaps people that have had a rough time, but at the same time, people that could actually use uh, the grease gun. We looked at these applications long and hard. Uh, we excluded um, people who applied for themselves and nominated themselves. We just didn't think that had the right connotation for what we were looking for. Um, 
a lot of you wives nominated your husbands. Who knows, maybe there'll be another opportunity um, to have a gift giveaway for Father's Day or something like that, but we just didn't think that was quite what we were looking for for this, so sorry in those cases. All I can say is, is we received a lot more nominations than we ever dreamed we would receive, and, and as, as I say, even with the criteria that we used, we got it down maybe a little below 100, and then we really struggled um, to choose these 20. So if you didn't win, you still have some time to use the Grease 2020 coupon code. It's been extended till the end of September 2020. You get free shipping on your entire purchase at lube-shuttle.us slash store. If you're watching this after the end of September 2020, you can still use coupon code TTWT and that'll get you a 5% discount. I love the Lube Shuttle system. These 20 will soon love the Lube Shuttle system and if you order one, I know you will too. Now, as you can see, we've almost got all the stocks knocked down, but don't give up on us. We're gonna go over this several times and I think you'll find it worthwhile to see the additional mulching that it does. I just kept on going over it because it kept mulching it. And I'm incredibly impressed with how well this flail mower did uh, after I lowered it, after I raised that roller. And uh, I, I should have known that and um, should have understood that earlier, but now I'm learning. So like you guys, it, it, it takes a little while, right? I've had a hard time ever getting corn stalks chopped up that well in the past. You know, a, a regular rotary cutter, Hey, remember the time I did it with my finish mower? You wanna go back to some really early episodes. I did it with the finish mower under this. Just hard to get them uh, to where they really get chopped up. Usually you just ride them down like we did on that first round here with the roller high and then you don't really cut them off. You can get your Moschio flail mower in three different styles. This is the hydraulic offset style. It's the most flexible, also the most expensive. Although I'm a little bit surprised at how inexpensive it is for this more, I'm not trying to say it's cheap, but for this much technology going on there, uh, I'm pretty impressed with the price. I think it's somewhere around $4,000 for the four or four and a half foot version. I have the four and a half foot version. The other two styles, there's a fixed version that goes right behind the tractor. And then there's a manual offset version or a, uh, I don't know, they call it fixed offset. And there may even be a hydraulic option on that one so that it'll go straight out a little bit to the right. It doesn't go as far to the right as this one, nor will it mow straight up and down like this one will. This one will mow, I think, 65 degrees down. Don't quote me on these exactly, but 65 down and 90, it'll go all the way up. So it would mow in the position that it's in right now. You can get all these at agfolks.com. Use code TTWT for a 5% discount. Have them shipped directly to your house. Uh, I'm really impressed with the attention to detail on this particular mower. There's so many just little things about it that make it worth an extra dollar or two to me. I had fun on this one. I like How flying to the drone. It? How did you just magically appear in the shot? You invited me over. 
Oh. And poof like this. And you just poof, shoot. I appear. <laughs> this time I had to be behind the scenes most of the time to get the, the good camera angles. Yeah, so you did some quality stuff with the drone. At least I hope it turns out quality. Sometimes I'd look so. up and the drone was right here. Yeah. Let's hope so. I don't ever fly it into you. <laughs> I hope you're not thinking that. No, but occasionally I, it doesn't go where I think it's going to go. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much. And uh, thanks you guys for watching. Go ahead and order that lube shuttle if you were not on the winner's list. If you are on the winner's list, congratulations. If you want to double check that list, you can go to tractortimewithtim.com slash grease 2020. The full list is there. Same page where you did the application or where your friend did the application. Cool. You can, you can find the names of all the winners there. Appreciate you watching. We love having you participating in our channel. It, yeah. It means a lot to us. It really does. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, Time with, with Tim. Tim.